the shadow. I've come here to help you, if you will accept my unseen presence without question, without fear. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We got no reason to be scared of the shadow. We ain't done anything wrong. Yeah, we ought to be glad he's willing to help us out and protect us from fellas like Spike and Marty. Question of the day. What is the most important business career lesson you've learned, and how has it helped you? It's attitude. It's attitude. It's attitude. The way you think is the way you act, and the way you act is the way you succeed. As my good friend Hank says, we must shift our thinking to opportunities rather than problems, strengths rather than weaknesses, asset-based thinking, what can be done instead of what can't, I get to instead of I have to. It's the optimism that we live in. As uh, Viktor Frankl said in Man's Search for Meaning, a positive attitude enables a person to endure suffering and disappointment as well as enhance enjoyment and satisfaction. A negative attitude intensifies pain and deepens disappointments. It undermines and diminishes pleasure, happiness, and satisfaction. It can even lead to depression or physical illness. I did a series, uh, an art series, called The Transdimensional Symbolism of Rocky Waters. And Rocky Waters is a metaphor for difficult times. And in the first piece, is 12 pieces. In the first piece, my character, my hero character, Rocky Waters, finds that just when he thought he was winning the game, fate took a turn down a blind alley. And suddenly he was forced to confront fear, doubt, and change. And over the series of paintings, or pieces of art, Rocky experiences different mindsets, ultimately leading to surrender and a revelation, the phoenix, and a piece I call the consequences of optimism. Rocky finds that doubt is a black hole, ravenously feeding itself false evidence, validating the imaginary delusion that despair is more valid than hope. But in a bewildering and unexpected epiphany bubbling out of a meditative state, he seizes upon the notion that a limitless universe provides no limit to possibilities, and the sheer limitlessness of possibilities guarantees limitless solutions for every impossible quandary. The mind left to itself will look for problems, make a list, and tell a story. But a mind focused on possibilities and plugged into the Almighty in a relentless pursuit of dreams will find outfinity leaping in with enthusiasm, inspiration, revelations, and the power to realize castles in the air. That's what I believe. Asset-based thinking is the only way. Positive thinking is the only possible way to live because everything else is destructive. So attitude is the most important thing. And it's like a tightrope. You know, you sit and you watch the world, or you participate. You act your way into the right thinking. And when you, in, in the arts, you can lose yourself in what you're creating, or, or aspiring to, or reaching for, or working on. And the mind can't take that time to look for what's wrong and make a list. And then you find yourself looking at something that has come out of nothing. And it begins to come together like puzzle pieces. So what I'd like to talk about is not just attitude, but preparation. The other important, most I, I think, among the most important things I've ever learned. When I'm unprepared, no matter how much experience I've had, when I'm unprepared, I get anxious. I get really nervous. Now, you get nervous anyway. But if you're prepared, you, you, get, you have the ability, the knowledge that 
You're walking in armed. I have this to fall back on. And in knowing that you have the landscape covered, you relax. You relax. And when you're relaxed, everything flows through you. You're more charismatic. You have greater enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is one of the great resources that we need to reach for. Um, Tennessee Williams said, enthusiasm is the most important thing in life. Beethoven said, from the glow of enthusiasm, I let the melody escape. I pursue it, breathless. I catch up with it. I embrace it. I multiply it. At last, I triumph. And there's the whole symphony. So I have enthusiasm. I'm relaxed. And everything goes better. Now, in in communication, we have tools for radio um, or television or any medium. You have the voice, you have to read, you have to write. It's all about communication. What do you do most? You prepare. You read a lot. You take notes. I realized early on that I wasn't really that bright, but I couldn't remember things like so many of my contemporaries. So I was the sidekick for the Steve Allen show on television. And every time they went to a commercial, Steve Allen would look down and he'd be writing furiously. He didn't talk to anyone. And I said, what, what are you writing? And he said, I write everything. I write down everything. Because he was afraid he was going to lose that thought. And if he wrote it down, he would always have it available. And, it, and the act of writing it down would reinforce it in his mind and it, he would have a better recall. So reading, taking notes, And writing. The more you write, the better you get. The more you concentrate, the better you get at concentrating. Everything about communication is being able to communicate through words and expression. The way you say it, the way you present it, and the way it has been prepared. And you know about imagination. Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. So in a series of unexpected events, I found myself failing and then having to recreate myself and to learn new things. Just when he thought he was winning the game, fate took a turn down a blind alley. And at the height of my radio career, something happened. And I went into advertising. And I built up the advertising. And just when advertising was going great, something happened. And I was forced out into something else. But the act of all the things I'd been doing and preparing for and working on culminated in me having greater experience and greater ability to communicate. And now I had new tools. So I I basically believe there's no hope without a positive attitude. Let's call it shattitude. My mind is trying to kill me. Negative thinking will make, I will dwindle, I will contract, I will get small and frail. And the problems are always worse in my mind. What I found was no matter how bad anything got, what led up to it was a thousand times worse in my mind. What was going to happen? So doubt is the enemy. It guarantees there's no positive outcome. But the thing is, you can never see the bigger picture. So if you can hold that in your mind, I can't see the bigger picture, but I have to give my best today. Optimism is an unshakable certainty that everything gets better. It's just a matter of time. A couple of years ago, Wired Magazine said about thinking positive, learning new things strengthens your brain especially when you believe you can learn new things. When you think you're getting smarter, you study harder, making more nerve cell connections, which makes you smarter. A Stanford University study, those who persist in the face of setbacks have more brain plasticity. They have increased cognitive performance to those who get defensive and give up easily. So the cure for a fixed level of intelligence is the mindset. A couple of years ago, I did a radio series called Brown Boy Love. Brown Boy is the most positive man who ever lived. And the story would go that over the last 30 years, stories have circulated about a man known as a legendary philosopher. 
This is a man who travels throughout the world with nothing but the clothes on his back and trusts that the universe will provide. So we interview him at locations all over the world, and just when he's about to tell us the most important thing we will ever hear, he gets hit by a bus, clearly killed. And yet, the very next week, we find him off the coast of Australia. And there, he's torn apart by a shark and hit by a ship. Clearly, there cannot be a good outcome. And yet, a week later, we find him in Italy. He's a black belt in the art of ricochet. No matter what happens, you've got to bounce back. You can fall from a plane or get a divorce, be riddled with pain or get kicked by a horse, be down in the dumps, you can have an attack, but no matter what happens, you've got to bounce back. Ricochet. In our next thrill-packed episode, we'll talk about the creative process, brainstorming, masterminding, puzzle pieces, and how ideas and solutions are revealed in the process. Don't miss it. Thank you so much. I am your friend in the void, The Shadow.